Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Wayne Rooney's manager profile, overviewing his tactical identity, while also talking about some issues he's faced at Derby County. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. Born in Liverpool on the 24th of October 1985, Wayne Rooney is the Derby County manager. Widely considered to be one of the best English footballers of all time, Rooney played almost 700 games in his career, winning 16 major honours with Manchester United and a whole host of individual awards. Rooney was regarded as one of the best players of his generation and played in a whole host of systems and positions, peaking numerous times in his career. First as an advanced forward in 2007, then as a false nine in 2009, lovingly known as the Skinhead Rooney Days, and finally as a second striker behind Javier Hernandez in 2011. Rooney finished his United career as the club's top scorer, breaking Sir Bobby Charlton's record in 2017 by scoring his 250th goal for Manchester United against Stoke City. In terms of the Premier League, only Alan Shearer scored more goals than Rooney in the Premier League. Finishing off his playing career in central midfield, Rooney took on a player coach role at Derby County in August 2019, eventually being named as interim manager in November 2020. Taken over whilst the club were last in the championship, Rooney guided the club to safety on the final day of the season. But after years of owner Mel Morris overspending, breaching FFP laws and entering into administration, Derby County have endured a 21-point deduction for the 2021-22 season. Despite that, Rooney's Derby have made up the 21-point deficit and without it would actually be mid-table. So much credit has to be given to Rooney for managing the situation, motivating the players and getting results on the pitch. Morris bet the life of Derby County on gaining promotion to the Premier League and reaping the financial rewards, but failed to do so, losing the playoffs four times between 2014 and 2019. By the 2017-18 season, Derby had amassed a wage bill of nearly £48 million, which equates to 161% of the club's turnover. Morris then sold Pride Park to another company that he owns for £81 million to avoid the EFL's permitted losses over three seasons, but this brought more scrutiny. Charged with breaching FFP in January 2020, cleared of any wrongdoing six months later, but eventually being charged for their poor bookkeeping. Derby are under very tight financial limitations thanks to the poor management of the football club. Despite the restrictions on player acquisitions, the wage budget and the points deduction, Rooney is salvaging the situation with results on the pitch, using youth prospects to bolster the first team and his reputation within the game to squeeze the most out of his players. Tactically, Rooney has favoured a 4-2-3-1, but he's used a variety of flat midfield threes as well as two strikers in a 4-4-2. Regardless of the starting shape, Rooney's principles remain the same as he looks to play defensively solid but quite direct football. Often his teams will play short around the back, then launch a direct pass into the forwards. Without the ball, his side drops into a 4-4-1-1, but depending on personnel, this could be a 4-5-1. From these starting positions, they try and push their opponents away from the goal, which would often see a central midfielder stepping up to create a 4-1-4-1 pressing structure, or the number 10 joining the striker to create a 4-4-2. The defensive shapes are quite compact and well-organized, which makes Derby difficult to play through, and has seen them concede the fourth fewest goals in the championship this season. Derby do try and press high up the pitch, either to restrict the opposition from playing out from the back or stopping the transition through counter-pressing. We saw the latter result in a goal against Luton with Cornick in possession after a derby attack. With two derby players restricting their forward passes, he goes back to Lockyer. He finds Bradley, who immediately is pressed by Knight. Knight wins the tackle and slips it to Lawrence to finish. At the start of the move, we see most of Derby's players retreating into their defensive shape, whilst the front three and central midfielder press Luton from quickly playing forward. They do well and restrict all of Lockyer's easy passes, encouraging the centre-back to play a low percentage long ball or a risky short pass. He chooses the latter and Knight robs the centre-back, creating a huge chance for Tom Lawrence. In possession, Rooney's Rams try and build out from the goalkeeper often creating a 3-1 build-up shape. From goal kicks, this is the keeper splitting the centre-backs and the deepest midfielder at the tip, 
Meanwhile, in most advanced areas, this is often made up of the centre back and central midfielders. From the goalkeeper, we often see short distribution to invite the opposition to press high before Derby go long to their forwards, taking players out of the game, making use of the extra space in the advanced areas. In their own half, whilst Rooney instructs the players to keep possession, Derby is still quite direct, using a 4-3-3 as the starting shape. The DM, centre-backs and even the goalkeepers look to go direct to the wide areas, often looking to get the winger on the ball early. Meanwhile, the outside midfielders tend to look for balls in behind, both along the ground and over the top. When attacking, Derby's shape transition to a 2-3-4-1, with the wingers operating from the half spaces and the fullbacks holding the width although the composition of their attacking structure can vary depending on the starting formation. For instance, if Rooney starts in a 4-2-3-1, the attacking structure will be asymmetrical. We've also seen a more defensive 3-2-4-1 in the few games where Rooney has deployed a back three. Rooney does instruct his players to move the opposition around with short passes, creating 1v1s in the wide areas. Most frequently, the nominal wingers try to send in crosses as quickly as possible. But if they're held up, we do see players making underlapping runs before low crosses. Despite Wayne Rooney developing a tactical identity, his Derby County side really struggle to create chances of significant quality. If they can create 1v1s out wide, crosses often don't reach the penalty area. Meanwhile, in sustained pressure, they take too many shots from outside the box and waste dangerous positions. A big shining light in the final third though is Tom Lawrence. The forward is almost the Wayne Rooney of Rooney's Derby County, and anything good that the Rams do in attack involves the former Man United man. Playing either as an attacking midfielder in the 4-2-3-1, or on the left wing in a 4-3-3, or even up front as a striker, Rooney's side would score a lot more goals if they had another player of his quality. The 28-year-old has been directly involved in 35% of Derby's 249 championship shots this season, and his ability to cut inside and bend finishes into the far post has won Rooney 9 points this season. But incredibly restrictive Derby County as his only managerial role so far, it's not clear how much of Derby's flaws are down to Rooney or to the players, but with a modern attacking structure and a defensive structure that looks really good, Rooney is definitely doing something right. So what's next for Wayne Rooney? Seeing the season out and keeping Derby in the championship would be an incredible achievement, but it does seem impossible. Even if they were to maintain his points per game at the moment for the rest of the season, Derby would only finish on 41 points, at least three short of the average for the 22nd place team over the past five seasons, and would end up getting relegated. But with the report that more sanctions could be on the way a great escape, the Derby seems very unlikely. Meanwhile, the vacant Everton job would be a great opportunity to apply his tactical identity to better players. That being said, if he was to manage better players, Rooney would have to improve himself as well, still learning his trade. He needs more passes into the feet and getting players in between the lines. From more advanced positions, there needs to be more positive possession rather than turning back and playing safe and starting again. Whilst in the final third, there needs to be fewer shots and range, which will see a better quality of chance created by cranking up the pressure, then using the likes of through balls, underlaps, overlaps, and crosses from both inside positions to open up the opponent. It doesn't matter where Wayne Mooney makes these tweaks to his tactical style. All that matters is he keeps working on his game because he's got the raw materials to manage at the very highest level. Who knows, maybe one day we'll see Wayne Rooney return to Old Trafford as the manager. Once upon a time, he was playing in one of the best attacking sides of all time and playing for a manager whose tactics would still dominate today. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Have you been impressed by Wayne Rooney's coaching career so far? And will he keep Derby in the championship? And also, I will see him at Old Trafford soon as manager. Let me know in the comments below. I've been Satman Dave. Subscribe to him. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?